Hi there, Gemini. Welcome to your November 2023 Astro Update. It's Raina here. Well, guess what? You have a full moon in your sign this month. So, I mean, you know, during the Sagittarius season, it's always going to be that way, but sometimes it's in December and not November. So there you go. At an early degree of Gemini, so those of you who are uh, sun signs are within a few days of, uh, you know, whatever it is, like May 20, would it be like 22nd or 23rd? Um, that will be affecting you the most or an ascendant within a few degrees of uh, that full moon. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, this is uh, Scorpio season for the first uh, few weeks. For you, Scorpio falls in your sixth house of work and health and your daily schedule, your time management. So this is a very practical area, and that could translate into matters that you are focusing on because of the sun being there and other planets, the new moon is going to be there as well. So if you're looking for a job, it might be actually a very good time to get one. Um, you may find if you're kind of looking in the past that this was this is a time of year when you tend to get jobs. Um, but, you know, that's that's a little bit tricky because you're not always leaving jobs at the same time either. I mean, these there are different uh, uh, things that, that play into that. So, <laughs> you know, I, I can't really say that across the board for sure. So anyway, as the month begins, uh, we do have the, uh, the sun in the sixth house. And so you you might be focusing on those kinds of matters that pertain to your um, work and maybe you're, you're uh, you know, throwing yourself into work. On the fourth of the month, Saturn turns direct at zero degrees of Pisces. Well, Pisces is a fellow mutable sign and it falls for you in the 10th house of career. So um, Saturn rules the 10th house. So in back in March, Saturn went into Pisces and you already have had Neptune there for many years. And that may have... Uh, had different influences for you on the positive side for those of you who have always wanted to be become a healer or <laughs> an artist this might have been a time when you were more receptive to it or the universe provided opportunities in that uh, area, but at, especially if you're softening your perspective because you're an air sign, you might be f feeling like, hey, you know, I need to be doing something intellectual instead of, you know, being a Reiki master, but you may have talent in that area. Um, and so Neptune going into this area in its own sign may, may be something that really is calling to you, but Neptune can be rather disorganized and Saturn coming here, coming into this sector can really crystallize these sometimes vague dreams that a person has when they have a Neptune, Neptunian influence. So, um, now that Saturn has gone direct, you may see forward movement in your career. Perhaps there's been kind of a, a little bit of a slowdown career-wise. Now see if things start to heat up a little bit. On the 8th, Venus goes into Libra, and this is a fellow air sign. This is actually falling in your fifth house of romance and creativity. So there you go more uh, creative influences, 
but also romantic. This can be, you know, you've had, um, I'm saying had, but actually I'm recording this the day before the solar eclipse ring of fire deal in Libra. And that might have been a period where you met somebody and now you're kind of in that courting phase. That's what the fifth house is, the dating phase. And so Venus here, Venus um, in the fifth house can just be uh, taking pleasure in pleasure. Uh, this is leisure time. This is leisure pursuits, hobbies, and the like. It can just be fun for the sake of fun. On the 13th, the new moon is at 20 degrees of Scorpio in that sixth house. And so while you're having fun, you're also getting down to brass tacks. Plant those seeds of intention. You had a lunar eclipse here back in May. Maybe something left your life in a dramatic way, and now you're, it cleared the field for you to you know, start anew in some way that has to do with your work that you're doing, your, um, the schedule that you're following, the health pr protocol that you're involved with. On the 22nd, the sun goes into Sagittarius, my sun sign, your opposite sign, the seventh house for you in astrology, and two days later, Mars goes here. So the, the seventh house is also the house of legal affairs. Mars could certainly be some kind of fight that is, you know, starting up. And if um, this is a marital situation or, you know, like a relationship situation, you may, you know, with, with Venus in the fifth house, um there may just be something where you're head over heels with someone that you have met and your primary relationship is just dying on the vine. So you may be feeling that sense of irritability with that person. Um, don't obviously don't pick fights so that you can have an excuse to leave the relationship. It's much better to leave with integrity than trying to create some kind of a crisis and then maybe you know it makes the other person look bad um there's no need to kind of um you know get ugly but it may indicate that there is some kind of legal uh thing already in the in the works because um back in i believe it was early june you had a full moon here and that might have been the end of a relationship the end of a marriage and now it's like you know putting it into final motion with some kind of um you know legal battle that has to take place on the 27th the full moon is at four degrees of gemini in your sign and this is a time of letting go. It can sometimes be insight that you gain into your independence. At every full moon, the sun is opposing it. Uh, so the sun is in that seventh house and it's shining a light on the relationship or your history of relationships. And the full moon is kind of like illuminating your own uh, peace in that. Like, how do you fit into that paradigm. Maybe for some Gemini people, you have been giving too much of yourself in relationships. Uh, I would say, especially if you, you, you might have, if you're a son in Gemini, you may have inner planets in Cancer uh, or even Taurus on the other side of uh, Gemini. And you tend to be the kind of person that bends over backwards uh, to the point of maybe codependency. And in those cases, um, it's easy to blame uh, the other person for taking advantage of you. But you have to go back to the self. How did I 
you know, feature into this. Remember that you had Mars in your sign for seven whole months, starting in August of 2022, going uh, all the way until March of 2023. And so this could have been a time when you were fighting to really become yourself. You know, Mars in the first house can be very feisty. Uh, this is the house that it rules through the sign of Aries. So there might have been that Aries. You might have, you know, developed a backbone if you have not had one. Aries, you know, uh, I mean, uh, Gemini is a masculine sign, but you're a mutable sign. And so you're very flexible and you're also very freedom loving. So it's easy for you to kind of like give in and then kind of like, I was going to say slither away. I don't mean slither. I mean, kind of like, uh, make your getaway because you don't want to be fully possessed or anything like that by someone. But in the process, what can happen is there can be this sense of you maybe, um, giving the wrong impress impression to another person or, um, not really communicating ironically because you're the sign of communication, but communicating your needs, just trying to be everything to everybody and yet trying to maintain your independence at the same time. And it's kind of a, you know, a tight rope to walk. So anyway, that's what I have for you, Gemini. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.